hello my name is Judy and welcome to another video so today I'm finally going to be filming something that I've been putting off for a long time and it's probably my most requested video and I've just never gotten around to doing it and I'm very very nervous but very very excited to finally be filming this so today's video is going to be my 2020 bookshelf tour yay <laughs> so yeah as i said this is something i just haven't done on my channel before so i don't really know exactly what i'm doing but i'm just going to give a little bit of background information before i actually go into the actual bookshelf tour so my bookshelves are the billy bookshelves from ikea i will link them down below so i have four bookshelves in my bedroom at the moment and they are not enough <laughs> to put it bluntly i don't have enough room i'd say about a third of my book collection is on the very very tops of the bookshelf so not on an actual shelf they are double triple stacked yeah, you can't see them all so depending on how long this takes i may well film at the end somehow a way of showing some of those they're mostly just paperbacks i don't know but until i get a bigger place and i have enough room for more bookshelves i can't fully display all of my book collection i do also have a lot of books in storage as well so unfortunately this won't be a full book collection but this is my bookshelf tour of what it's like now and the ones you usually see in my videos and in the backgrounds of my videos so i'm going to be showing you all of those today i'm not going to talk through every single book i'm just going to talk maybe about some of my favorites or point out some that have really cool covers stuff like that because if i went through every single book we'd be here all day and this would be like longer than all three of the extended editions of the lord of the rings put together and nobody wants that so yeah we're gonna keep it brief but i'm very very excited to talk through some of the books that i have i am a book collector as well as a book reader so i do have sometimes two editions of a book and things like that sometimes i have the hardcover and the paperback version yeah I'm, i buy a lot of books guys so there's a lot <laughs> But yeah, I don't really organise my books in a specific way. I keep kind of like all my Sarah J Mass books together and things like that. But then I kind of have some fantasy on one section, fantasy on another, non-fiction in another section. So I don't exactly have a specific order of how I have my books. I kind of just organise them how i want them I, I don't know it's weird but you will see that and that kind of covers all of the background info that you guys will have needed but if you would like to see what books i have and see my bookshelf tour then please keep watching i'm just going to give you guys a quick overview of my bookshelves and then we will get into the actual tour so yeah lots of hand gestures <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start with this shelf first, so I'm not going to start from the very top, I'm just going to start from the second shelves down, work my way across and then I'll show you the top ones towards the end. So this is going to be the first shelf we talk about, so this shelf is kind of random <laughs> and doesn't really have a specific order and then it kind of goes into my shadow hunt books down here i just have my little wonder woman pop vinyl which is really really cute um i used to collect these and have so many of these but i don't anymore and i got rid of most of them i just have this is suzanne collins book here which is the new one but it's not with my other hunger games books because i don't have them in hardcover i only have them in paperback so they're shoved on the top of my shelves but i haven't read that yet and i don't really plan to anytime soon um and then i just kind of have some like books that are kind of like superhero-ish so i've got this gorgeous copy of star wars a new hope i absolutely adore this i absolutely love it it's just so pretty so yeah and then i just have catwoman soul stealer by sarah j mass which is actually signed as well which i love um so yes signed by the queen herself and then i have obviously wonder woman i haven't read this yet but i've read the graphic novel and i loved it so i can't wait to get that then it's just some kind of random like YA fantasy kind of books and um, mostly fairy loot books and then it starts into my Cassandra Clare collection so not all of my Cassandra Clare books are together because I do have some paperbacks but I have these three of the Dark Artifices paperbacks here I've got those three and then I have this Mortal Instruments cup and I got this from the fairy loot chain of gold subscription box and I actually had one of these before but I smashed it 
Um, so I had to buy this off someone. And then I have this broken <laughs> Shadow Hunter necklace. So this just has the, the Shadow Hunter rune on it there. Um, and I got this at Comic Con. It's broke, so I just keep it in there until I can find a way to fix it. And then I just have some more Cassandra Clare books. So Ghost of the Shadow Market, Shadow Hunter Academy, Bane Chronicles. So just kind of like side books or novellas. Sorry if this isn't exactly level. I don't actually have a tripod that's tall enough for my bookshelves. So this is my Cassandra Clare shelf. So I have pretty much all of my Cassandra Clare hardcovers are on here. But when obviously the next book comes out in this series, I won't have any room. Um, so I hope I have bigger bookshelves by there. I got this when I was in New York from the Strand, so this is just the Shadow Hunters um, Illustrated History, and this just has really cool illustrations and things in here. Um, so I really, really like this book, and it was super cheap. So I have this mug I got from a fairy loot box. I don't remember which one, um, but it just has loads like, of Shadow Hunters on it, which is really cool. And then I also have this here. Just a lot what this actually is, um, but this is just a pocket watch, and it is a Shadow Hunter one. Um, so we've got a rune there, and then it's just a little watch um and it does close as well just looks like this um so i actually got this from a comic con um a few years ago and i really really like it so i just have it displayed on my shelf and i have all of these waterstones exclusive editions of cassandra claire's books are there and then these ones as well i love this one um this is probably one of my favorites and this actually does have cassandra claire's signature inside as well this one is a signed copy which is really really cool and yeah this is the 10th anniversary edition i believe and this one is as well which is just a quick quick angel super pretty and then this one here what's this the fairy loot one i honestly don't remember one of these two is the fairy loot one one is the water stones ones and then i just have some more books here so that is my cassandra claire shelf i'm gonna get all of these shadow hunt books in like the hardcovers like this from the us eventually but it's just that there's a lot of them and they're very expensive so for now i just have these hardcovers and then the rest are in paperback which i will show you in a little bit so next we have my kind of victoria schwab shelf and then random kind of ya books so i have these two us hardcovers of city of ghosts and tunnel of bones and i just absolutely adore these editions so i'm really glad that i have them um then i have a dust jacket here because i'm currently reading adi larue that is the standard waterstones cover and then I also have the special signed copy from Waterstones as well, which has really, really gorgeous end papers and yeah, is signed. And then I also have the Forbidden Planet signed exclusive edition as well, which has different end papers in and obviously Victoria Schwab signature. So yeah, I love those. Then I have some other books by V Schwab. I don't have all of their books just yet, um, but these are the ones that I do have. I really need to get a darker shade of magic in the white version, and then I still need to get one more of the collector's editions. Both of these two are collector's editions. I have a darker shade of magic. I got this so long ago, I think when it very first came out, and it's a little bit worn. <laughs> and then i have a conjuring of light as well so i still need to get one more to complete the set um but i really like both editions but i really like the white ones a bit more the black ones are slightly smaller yeah and then on top of that i just had this mug so this isn't actually anything to do with victoria schwab but this is my serpent and dove mug from fairy loot i love this mug it's so pretty and then i just have some random stuff in here so i've got like these cards from fairy loot a random fake rose and then some change <laughs> so nothing too exciting in there but i just put it up there because it's the only place i really have room for it so next we have some of these here so i have the serpent and dove candle that i got in the blood and honey box and then i also have these blood and honey cards as well so these are a tarot deck and these are gorgeous they've got like gold foil and like really really stunning illustrations as well um so i absolutely love these like they're just so cool um yeah i love tarot cards i just think they're so fun so i just keep them up there because i don't really have anywhere else to put them <laughs> and i have serpent and dove and blood and honey by shelby mahoran i think is how you pronounce her name these are both the fairy exclusive edition so they are both signed inside as well and they have the really nice sprayed edges i like serpent and dove better um, but yeah, I have the Fairy Loot editions of those and I absolutely 
loved Serpent and Dove. I haven't read Blood and Honey yet and I'm very, very excited to though because I adored Serpent and Dove. I read it this year and I just adore the main character. She's absolutely hilarious. Then I've just got some kind of other books here. So these are all like YA books. These are all from Fairy Loot. Wicked Fox, I can't wait to read. I'm very, very excited to read that. It's kind of random. And then I just have this random fantasy book here, um, which I haven't read yet. So this shelf is pretty much just a adult fantasy shelf. I don't really think there's any YA on here. Um, a lot of these I haven't actually read just yet. I really hope you can't see the amount of dust that is on my bookshelf right now because it's disgusting. <laughs> I have this Blood and Honey tin that I keep on there and this just contains some bookmarks. So I have most of my fairy ones in here and then some other ones like this one from Nevernight, um, another Brandon Sanderson one here. And then I have this really pretty wooden one. Um, so yeah, I just keep some bookmarks in here really. And I just really like this tin. It's just really pretty. And so yeah, this just has some bookmarks in it. So first we have the Fairy Loot exclusive editions of the City of Brass books. So I'll just show you guys them quickly. I just realised I had those books in the complete wrong order on my shelf. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, here we are. So these are the fairly exclusive editions. So these are all signed as well. And then they all have these really, really nice sprayed edges. So they look like this. Um, I just noticed mine actually has like this big black smudge on it, but I don't really care as long as it's not too noticeable. Um, but yeah, I have these ones here and they have the really nice sprayed edges. And then I have the Poppy War, which I'm very, very excited to read the Poppy War. I've actually got the second book for Christmas from my boyfriend, and then I have the third book pre-ordered. Um, but I really, really want to read this soon. And then another series that I'm really, really desperate to get to is Nevernight. I still haven't read it, and I really, really want to. Um, but I managed to get my hands on UK hardbacks, because these went out of print. Dark Dawn is signed as well, um, but these are just the standard UK hardbacks, and I'm very, very happy to have these because I spent a long time tracking them down. I know since then a few subscription boxes have reprinted them but I just wanted to get the standard UK hardcovers and I managed to get them which I'm very very happy about. This one does have sprayed edges which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm very very happy to have these because I spent so long trying to collect them um, and I can't wait to read them as well. And same with the bone season, I'm very very excited to get to the bone season soon because I know a lot of people love Samantha Shannon. Um, I, as you can see, I don't have my Samantha Shannon books together. There's no reason for that other than I was lazy when I put this back on my shelf when I read it last month, so it isn't in the right place. Um, this is actually signed as well by Samantha Shannon. Yeah, so this is actually signed as well. Yeah, I probably should move that. <laughs> okay, so the next shelf down is some of my favourite shelves. Um, I just want to say I quickly played back some of the footage and I realised that I am very, very close to my camera so the sound isn't great and I do apologise for that. But I don't have a microphone, I have no other way of filming this any further away so I do apologise if the audio isn't great. But yes, anyway, um, so this is kind of a random shelf. I want to say this is kind of like dark academia, kind of like dark gothic ishy vibes. I don't really know, um, but I kind of just have like these books sitting together. I have this Cresswell candle that I got from Meraki Candles a few years ago. Fortunately, um, that store doesn't exist anymore, but I love the candles. Um, but I just still have this one left, which I found that I forgot about. Um, so this is just a Cresswell candle from the Sork and Dragon Ripper series. So I do have um, all four books in the series. And then I also have um, an arc of Stalking Jack the Ripper, which is one of my prized possessions. My lovely friend Caitlin um, did a trade with me for that, so I'm really happy that I have that. And then I have the gorgeous Fairy Loot edition of Kingdom of the Wicked. This is, of course, signed, as you can see. And this is one of my favourite books that I own because it has... The most stunning sprayed edges I've ever seen in my entire existence. Like, seriously, have you ever seen edges as gorgeous as these? Because I haven't. And underneath, when this is naked, it is just even prettier. So I'll quickly show you. I don't know if the standard hardcovers like this as well, but I mean, have you ever seen anything so stunning? Literally obsessed. But yeah, I have the Fairy Loot edition and I also have the standard hardcover edition. Um, and then I have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. So I think this is signed. Um, I think this is the Waterstones exclusive edition. My bookmark's in there. I've been trying to read this book forever and I still haven't read it and it's getting embarrassing. This was the Waterstones exclusive signed edition. So it looks like this. I don't know 
if this is the same as the standard edition but it just looks like this underneath i really love the spine it's so cool with the snake scales then i have some lee bardugo books so i think this one is signed and then i have the special editions of six of crows and crooked kingdom and then i just have ray bearer uh, randomly just chilling <laughs> so next is one of my absolute favorite shelves so this is kind of like my holly black kind of fairy and then random shelf so i have these holly black books here which i adore i love these hardcovers i really want to pick up the us editions as well so hopefully i can however these two i picked up in the us i haven't read this one um, but i've read all the others and i adore this series so much but i have this really cute little keyring so this is really really cute and it actually has a quote on it kiss me until i am sick of it on it and it's just yeah i love this so cute so i keep that up there and then i have the waterstones exclusive edition of how the king of elfame learned to hate stories and then i have the standard edition here um and i'm literally obsessed with this this is one of the most stunning books ever so i did tab this one as you can see but it just has some really really amazing illustrations in here and i just adore them <laughs> But yeah, I just, I absolutely love this book. I recently read it and gave it five stars and it's one of my favourite books I've read in 2020. And I just love the illustrations in here because they are absolutely incredible. Then I just have this random candle. Um, it says Creep It Real. Um, so it's nearly empty, but this smells amazing. I'm going to use this to put like pens or something in soon when it's empty, but I just randomly have it on my shelf at the moment. You just kind of have some random books. So I have like these ones here. These two are Fairy Loot exclusive editions. And then I have um, this Fairy Loot edition here of A Curse of Dark and Lonely with this really pretty spine. I really need to get the sequel in this edition. I just can't find it anywhere because I pre-ordered the third book in the Fairy Loot edition. So I really do need to try and find the second one, but they're nearly impossible to find now. Then I have the Caraval series by Stephanie Garber. So I haven't actually read this series and I have two different sets of it. I know that's really bad, but I like to collect books. I got this set when I was in New York at the start of the year and I just didn't want to pass it up. Um, and then I have the UK editions here. And then I just have this random cup and saucer on the top. Next is kind of random fantasy, sci-fi, adult and YA. It's kind of just a mix of random stuff basically. So I don't have all of my Sanderson books together either. I do have some other Sanderson books further down my shelves so I don't necessarily organise my books by author. I have the Fairly edition of Skyward here and then I have the UK hardcover. Then I have both of the US editions as well which I picked up when I was in New York. So I picked these US editions up when I was in New York and I definitely prefer the US editions to the UK ones. I just think the covers are amazing. I haven't read this series yet. I really, really want to, um, but I'm always a bit funny with sci-fi, so I don't know if I will. And then I have this signed copy of Veronica Roth's new book, which is The Chosen Ones. Another one I haven't read yet. Yeah, but this one is signed as well. Um, I have a lot of signed books, like all of my Fairy Loot books are signed. And then I kind of pick a lot up as well. And I have these books here. Um, so these are both signed. One is the Fairy Loot Edition, one is the Forbidden Planet one. I think they're really pretty. Then I have some Jennifer L. Armentrout books. I'm going to get this in hardcover and I can't wait to get it in hardcover. But yeah, this series here, I'm so desperate to read. Maybe by the time this video goes up, I will have started or read this series. But I can't wait to read this. Everyone loves this and... I just know I'm going to obsess over it and I can't wait to read it. So yeah, I'm very, very excited to read this series. And I forgot to mention, but I just have this random little light up house, which is really cute. Don't know why this is on here. It's one of my Christmas decorations, but here we are. <laughs> So this shelf is kind of random and doesn't really have any particular order to it. It's a mix between YA and fantasy. Um, so I have a whole random bunch of books on here. I have this cool like palmistry hand with some like rings on that I don't really wear. And then I just have a lot of kind of like some fairy loot editions in here, some YA, some um, fantasy and things like that. Um, I love this edition. Um, and then I have, I still need to get, they're the wrong way around. <laughs> I have a really bad habit just buying books when I see them. Um, so some series are missing, like random books. Um, I still need to get book one, Shadow and Bone, in this hardcover edition. I do own these in paperback and I have read the first book and the second book. I don't really like this series, to be honest. I think it's really overhyped and quite boring. And the main character, pretty much all the characters I don't care about and I find them all really boring. So please don't come for me if this is one of your favourite series. Um, but anyway, I still need to get the first book. And then this one, I still need to buy the second book in hardcover as well picked up this book here when i was in new york which is loki i really still want to read this 
and this has really cool um, edges as well. Um, I love Loki, he's one of my favourite anti-heroes and he's one of my favourite Marvel characters so I really do want to read this soon um, but I bought this in New York in January I think. Also I'm absolutely obsessed with this cover. How cool this is. This sounds so creepy. I haven't read this yet and I really really want to but this just sounds amazing. I'll show you guys the blurb now so you can pause it and read it if you want to because I can't be bothered reading this whole long blurb out. But this kind of has like sort of fairies in it um, but it's a really dark tale. It just sounds really really scary and like look at the cover. How scary is that cover with all the writing? Like yeah, I really want to read this soon. I was supposed to read this last Halloween and I just didn't. Um, so hopefully I actually do get to that one soon. The shelf is mostly YA and it is actually mostly books I haven't read, which is quite bad. So this is kind of just all together because it's mostly the same height. There's no particular other reason why these books are all together on the same shelf. The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer, which I still need to read but haven't. I have this book here, which I picked up. I really, really want to read this soon. I think I actually might read this in December or sometime soon. This seems like a very wintry book. I absolutely adore this cover and I've heard really, really good things about this book. This is probably one of my favourite book covers ever. I just think this is stunning. I absolutely love it. So this book here is actually one of the prettiest books that I own as well. Um, so this is called Mermaid Moon by Suzanne Cockle, I think is how you pronounce her name. Like, look how absolutely stunning that cover is but it has blue sprayed edges and underneath it just has this gorgeous rose on it as well so I just think this book is absolutely stunning those fairy lights are very annoying just so pretty like the main reason I bought it was because of how pretty it is but it does actually sound really good and I do really want to read this I also have these Nicola Yoon books so I absolutely love Nicola Yoon's writing I love both of these books they're just really really good books and I just think if you're looking for a really good contemporary book that touches on some really important themes and messages I highly recommend Nicola Yoon's books. She is a fantastic writer and I love both of those books. I have Aurora Rising, which is cover I absolutely love, but I don't really have any interest in reading this. I read Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff earlier this year and I absolutely hated it. It was so boring and it's really put me off reading this, so I don't know if I will, but the cover is really, really pretty. So next we have one of my absolute favourite shelves for obvious reasons. This is one of my Sarah J Mass shelves. And I talk about this shelf quite a lot because I love Sarah J Mass, as you all know. So I have the Sarah J Mass Throne of Glass game. I've never actually played this, um, but of course I had to own it. Oh so, yeah, this is just like really, really cool. Then I have this little like moon dish I got in a fairy light box and I have this throne of glass necklace which is like my favorite necklace ever i got this a few christmases ago and i literally wear it like all the time so this just has one of my absolute favorite sergey mask quotes on it and i'm just obsessed with it i love it so much i got it on etsy so if i can find it i will link it down below a lot of people actually don't realize that these books exist and they always ask me about them so i'll show you guys them actually individually these are actually the sarah j mass throne of glass mini editions so just a side note, I don't keep all my Throne of Glass books together. Um, these just don't really fit on my shelf very well because they are so small. So this is kind of where they've ended up. But yeah, I will just quickly show you guys them. But firstly, I have the Assassin's Blade and then Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, They're Gonna Fall, <laughs> Tower of Dawn, and then Kingdom of Ash. So yeah, I love these. I think they're so cute. I will just let you guys know inside the pages are like kind of, I call them Bible pages, those really, really thin plasticky pages. So just bear that in mind um, if you're gonna buy these. I love these. A lot of people don't understand the point of buying these. I bought them because anything Sarah J Mass releases, I'm gonna buy, let's be honest. But I also think they're just really, really useful. Throne of Glass is one of my all time favorite book series and I adored it and I actually took this to New York with me this year um, and this was absolutely perfect because look how small it is so this was so easy to carry around with me I always had a book in my bag and that didn't weigh it down um, and the font isn't actually too bad to read at all it does look very small and of course it's small but it is readable and I just think they're really really nice to collect as well I really hope they do this for the Axar series as well um, but I just think these are absolutely adorable and I'm trash for Sarah J Mass, so I had to have these <laughs> we have my Crescent City books so I'll quickly talk through these because I really love this book and these editions so this one here is the Waterstones exclusive edition and it has red sprayed edges as well and then I just have the standard hardcover that has the white 
normal edges um i did start to reread and annotate it and stuff um but i stopped doing that because i had other books to read but this copy will be the one that i will annotate and tab when i do reread it then i have this edition this is one of my most prized possessions so my parents bought me this for my birthday this year and i'm so so grateful that they did because this is just yeah this is like a dream from truth mate so this is obviously the us edition but inside is personalized to me by sarah j mass herself so it says to jd sarah j mass so that's all I wanted. I literally just wrote my name when it was like, what do you want her to write in it? So I just wrote Jodie. And now I wish I wrote a quote or something, but at the time I was just so like, oh my God, I don't know. I'm so starstruck at the thought of her actually signing a book for me, just put my name. Um, so yeah, it just says my name and then Sarah J Maas. So I'm very, very happy that I have that book because yeah, she is my favorite author. And of course that is very, very nice to have. Then I just have this edition here. So this is out. Um, the opposite way round but it just has these gorgeous edge papers here like stunning this is actually the german edition of crescent city obviously i can't read german um but i bought this to display just because no other edition has this and i i think it's gorgeous <laughs> then i have the waterstones tour edition 2020 for crescent city um that just looks like this um and then i have a proof copy of the book which i read at the start of the year and fell in love with and you can see the spans cracked because yeah this book went everywhere with me this is the arc um a lot of people ask me if this was the paperback i get asked that all the time in my photos and videos this isn't it is a proof copy the paperback does come out next year though it's like my first ever sarah j mass arc so i will treasure that forever then we have this bryce and hunt candle that i made um which yeah it smells really good i just keep this on here as it matches the box. I just have the new hardcover editions of the Avatar series. So a lot of people don't know what these look like. So I'll show you these as well. Um, so we have a Court of Thorn and Roses. And then we have a Court of Mist and Fury, which is definitely my favorite one. And also my all time favorite book. And we have a Court of Winds and Ruin. And then a Court of Frost and Starlight. So now let's move on to the second Sarah J Mass shelf. So this is the second shelf. I could easily have like four shelves dedicated to Sarah J Mass. I do also own all of these books in paperback as well, but they aren't displayed with these anymore because I need to, to conserve space. So I have the hardcover set of the Throne of Glass books, which I love. And then I have these Throne of Glass sticky tabs. I believe this edition of Tower of Dawn is an exclusive edition. Yeah, so this is an exclusive edition. I believe this is from Bonds and Noble. Um, I got it on eBay though. <laughs> then another prized possession of mine. Um, my friend Alexa kindly sent this to me. I still cannot get over this act of kindness. I didn't actually know Alexa very well and I hadn't spoken to her much. Um, I was actually trying to track down some Sarah J Mass arcs to trade for. She'd actually tweeted saying that she had this and she was looking to trade it. So I contacted her and said, I know you're looking to trade it, but is there any chance you'd ever sell it? It's a book I've been trying to get for a long time for my Sarah J Mass collection and I'd absolutely love to buy it from you if you would let me. And not only did she let me have it, she also sent it to me for free. And I still, to this day, can't get over someone being that kind because she basically said to me, I know how much you love Sarah J Mass. I can see how much this book means to you and that you're someone who genuinely does want this book and wants it for their collection, you can have it. And I just, yeah, I still to this day cannot get over it. And Alexa is just such a wonderful person and I will forever be grateful to her for giving me this book because this was a book that I read at a time in my life where I really needed escapism and it definitely gave me it. And I just have a really strong emotional attachment to Throne of Glass and the Axar series in particular. So yeah, this book means a lot to me and to have this edition is just, yeah. This is the original Throne of Glass hardcover that came out and as you can see it has a totally different cover. These are very very hard to come by so I am very very grateful to Alexa as I've said. So this is a first edition which is just amazing. So to have a first edition, one of my favourite books is just amazing and yeah I just I adore this copy. I also have this edition of Throne of Glass so this is one of the collector's editions. I believe this is the UK one. I still need to pick up the US edition because it is slightly different but I still have this in the cellophane wrap because I'm never going to physically read this edition so I just kept it in it. Um, but yeah I love these. I think they're so nice and 
I can't wait for them to do a Crescent City one. <laughs> I also have this here. So I have this little favourite magnetic bookmark. And then I have the collector's edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses. So this book is absolutely stunning. A lot of people do ask me about this book and what it is on my shelf because I always have it displayed. I believe these are readily available online, um, but this is just absolutely beautiful. I love this. Um, it doesn't come like this. It comes in this slipcase, which is also very, very pretty. Um, but I don't have it displayed in the case, but out of the case, just because look at it. It's absolutely stunning. And it's one of my favorite books that I own also. And the inside is so pretty. See, it has these gorgeous end papers and then like these little illustrations as well yeah i just absolutely adore that then i also have these two candles i have had a lot of other sarah j mass related candles in the past but i have used them all but i have these two here this one i got in a subscription box and this one is from the melting library but i bought it through depop so yeah, I just, I love my bookish candles. Then I have this little art print just in a frame of Fair and Recent. Then I have the Akhtar books in hardcover and these are the original covers and I just love them. My all time favourite book will always be Akamath. I read that series at a point in my life where I really didn't need the escapism and it was just something that really helped me get through some basically. Just a series that I will always adore and no book has ever compared to Akamath for me. Every time I reread it, I love it more and more. It's one book I can easily reread because I don't reread books very often. But Akamath is a book that if someone asked me to read one book every single day for the rest of my life, I would choose Akamath. So I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you guys these books because my desk is in the way. So I can't really put my tripod in front. But this is kind of just a random shelf of mostly fantasy books. So I do have The Beautiful and The Damned, which are both Fairy Loot exclusive editions and signed. And then I also have the um, Lani Taylor, Thought of Smoke and Bone trilogy in hardcover. I only recently managed to track down the third book in the series in these editions because they are out of print. Then I have the Discovery of Witches series in hardcover. I also have a set of the UK paperbacks and the US paperbacks. That is my US paperback here, as you can see, of A Discovery of Witches. And I've tabbed the life out of it. Um, so yeah. <laughs> This is just kind of like a random shelf. Um, I love this cover on Guild of Wolves. I think it's stunning. Okay, so this shelf is really, really random. It doesn't have any kind of particular order. This is kind of just, I had to shove these books somewhere. They've ended up on this shelf. So here we have a lot of like fairy loot books and just like random like YA books really. I have this really nice exclusive edition from Fairy Loot of Fable by Adrian Young. Signed and it's so small. <laughs> it's just, just such a tiny hardcover. I actually prefer the original cover to the fairy loot one um, but this is still super pretty then i also have this anniversary edition of graceling by kristen kishore so i haven't read this um, but i really really love this edition then i just have some like random books and then i also have this copy of the midnight library by matt haig so this is a signed copy i got at wardstones this includes the bonus content as well I love this, I think this is so cool. Yeah, it is signed, which is really cool. I haven't read this yet, but I've heard really, really good things about this book and I'm really, really excited to get to it. It doesn't really fit on this shelf, but to be honest, it doesn't really have a home yet. I don't really know where to put this one. But yeah, I really, really wanna read this soon. I have these really nice hardcover editions of the Mistborn series. So this is the first three. I think this is the original trilogy. I have the Final Empire, which is like this. And these are like that weird kind of material and they don't actually have a dust jacket. I just noticed I haven't got these in the right order either. I'm so sorry. Okay, so they're in the right order now, but this is the second book in the series, which is The Well of Ascension. Looks like this. And then we have the third one, which is The Hero of Ages. Just like this. I love those editions. I think they're really cool. And then I have these Dan Brown books here, which I'm really excited to read at some point. I don't honestly know when I will read these. I just know that I want to because I love this kind of stuff and I love the movies. And then I just got this little like Da Vinci statue thing to match them. And I just think this is really, really cool. So this shelf is what I like to call my cheesy YA shelf. So I obviously have the Twilight series and I also have two of the graphic novels. Then I have this really nice hardcover set of the Percy Jackson series. I just love these spines. I think they are absolutely gorgeous. And I also have the US editions of the Divergent series. I never actually read the third book in the end. I loved this book when I read it at the time. I read it right after Hunger Games and 13 year old me was obsessed. And then it took like a year for the second book to come out, which I did read. And then 
after that I couldn't be bothered waiting another year for the third book and I just never read it. I like having them still because they're very like nostalgic. And then I have the first two books in the selection series which I haven't read, Call Down the Hawk which is a side series to the Raven Boys. I still haven't read this, I got this when I went to um, America as well and I just haven't read it and to be honest I don't really have an interest in reading it at the moment so yeah don't know when I'll get to that one and then I have this really cheesy Colleen um, Hook book which is called Reawakened the reason I got this is because this is actually inspired by Egyptian mythology and there aren't that many books that are inspired by Egyptian mythology that are particularly YA and this is one of the only ones I could find. So this is the first book in that series um, and I do hope to read this at some point because I love anything to do with um, the Egyptians. I just find their whole like, culture and history fascinating. I think this will be a really fun book so I really do want to get to this soon. So next we have this really random shelf. So this is kind of like some of my middle grades and then some manga. So I've recently got into manga. It took me a long time to get into manga, but it was gonna happen eventually. I love graphic novels, so it made sense to read some manga. And I've really enjoyed what I've read so far. So my manga collection isn't very big at the moment, but I do plan to buy a lot of manga. I really want to get Tokyo Ghoul. I've recently watched the anime and I'm absolutely obsessed. I absolutely love it. So I want to buy the whole box set, which I think I might do after Christmas, but I'm not sure yet. But yeah, I'm definitely going to need at least all of this space for more manga probably more than one shelf eventually but for now this is my collection i have this mug here which i think was inspired by to kill a kingdom and this is from a fairy loot box and i just have some highlighters in here that i don't really use um so yeah there's just like highlighters and pens in there and then here i have my Coraline and the graveyard book hardcovers by neil gaiman and illustrated by chris riddell I absolutely adore both of these books. I really, really enjoyed them. I read Coraline in October and it's the first time I've ever read it. I still haven't seen the movie. I've only watched half of it. But I can tell from the half of the movie I did watch, I definitely prefer the book. I think this book is absolutely terrifying and I absolutely adored it. It's so good. And the Graveyard book as well, I listened to that on audio instead of physically reading it, but the audio for that was absolutely fantastic. It's so good and Neil Gaiman actually narrates it himself and I'd highly recommend it. It's just such a fun and entertaining and creepy story. It starts with the young boy's parents being brutally murdered and the guy trying to kill the baby. Like, you know, I, I, I don't know what Neil Gaiman was on when he wrote both of these books. But they're very, very creepy and twisted for children's books but they are absolutely amazing and I adore both of them. And I really like that these are hardcover as well. Like. And the illustrations are just yeah i love both of these and i have this middle grade here which is called cinders and sparrows and this is by stefan backman and i haven't read this just yet i only recently got it but i'm obsessed with the cover i just think it's absolutely stunning i love this little castle as well i recently read a proof for a book that was a middle grade and it was like a witchy one and i loved it and i've been trying to find books that are really similar and this popped up on my radar and this just sounds really, really good and I'm obsessed with the cover. This is like a magical adventure story and I just can't wait to read it and I absolutely love the cover and the little pumpkin and like the castle and I just, yeah, I love this like aesthetic, it's so cool. I swear middle grades have like the prettiest covers. Like look how stunning this artwork is on this one as well. Just love the artwork and like, yeah stunning <laughs> i also recently got this and i can't wait to read this i think i'm going to be reading this very soon this is like a short story by neil gaiman and it's illustrated by chris riddell and this is called the sleeper and the spindle and this is like a hardcover and it is stunning i absolutely love the artwork and then when you take this off we have this underneath which is just amazing like look at that little skull on the back i love it so much this has like really cool illustrations throughout and i think this is like neil gaiman's take on sleeping beauty i believe and yeah i just i can't wait to read this and i just adore this i think it's stunning you can also get an anniversary edition of this i believe which just comes in like a slipcase hardcover um, so I might eventually get that as well, but I'm just obsessed with this cover and the artwork. I love Chris Riddell. Um, his illustrations are amazing. But well, yeah, I just love this. I wanted this for my little like Neil Gaiman collection. But I also have this series here. So this is the Nevermore 
book series by Jessica Townsend but I'm just going to show you these with the dust jackets off because these books are absolutely stunning so these are them without their dust jackets on and they're absolutely like just look at them they're so pretty um so this is nevermore here and it just looks like this and i just think it's absolutely stunning then we have wondersmith we have hollow pox here which looks like this and this one is actually signed too and it says burn brightly and then it's signed by jessica townsend so i love that i just think these are absolutely gorgeous and i think children's books quite often have the best illustrations and i'm here for it so then i also have this arc here so this is a forest moon and sword by amy raphael so you might have heard me talk about this a lot in previous videos if you're one of my subscribers but this comes out in january next year and this is one of my favorite middle grades i've ever read it is so good um so i'd highly recommend having a look into this book if you really like anything that's like witchy and has like an element of magical realism and historical fiction because this is a middle grade and it's just it is amazing like i rave about this book a lot but i love it so much then I have some manga here. So I have a Vampire Night volumes 1 to 15. I still need to get the other, I think, four volumes in this series. Um, but at the moment, a lot of them are out of print, so they're very hard to get hold of. But I really, really love that manga series. It's so fun, and I like the anime as well. Then I have this Junji Ito. So this is Venus in the Blind Spot, and this is, I think, his newest manga. For those of you who don't know, Junji Ito does horror manga. I've never read any horror manga before and i really wanted to get this i saw this i was like oh my god i really need to try it and this will be the best way for me to have a little go at junji ito's writing and see if i actually like it so this is a collection of short stories and i just think this will be a really good introduction and underneath the dust jacket has this art still and then we have this on the actual book which is really cool but i think i will really like junji ito and i've had a few comments on videos saying that i might like this so i'm really excited to read this soon i'm just obsessed with this cover and this does also have some color in it because usually it's all black and white i'm really really excited for this book and to read it and i just think it looks amazing and i have these mangas here which i'm really excited about so i have the girl from the other side which i just think looks so cool it has really cool illustrations and i recently got these two um i can't even pronounce them but these just look so creepy and i love the covers actually cannot find these anywhere so if anyone knows where i can get the other volumes in this series then please do comment below and let me know because i really really want them but i love this cover so much and i have orange volumes one and two so at the moment i'm currently reading orange and i'm absolutely loving it the story is just so fun and cute and i really really like it so far so i'm really excited to go on to the second volume i do believe there is a third one which is called future which is kind of related to it don't know if i'll get that it depends how much i like the second one but yeah, this is my very, very small manga collection. It's in its early stages, but eventually it will be very big because I do really enjoy manga. So this is probably the best angle I am going to get for this corner, and I don't even know if it's worth me going through this corner. This is kind of my really messy corner. <laughs> my desk actually comes all the way up to here, so you usually can't really see this, and I don't really bother to access any of these books, but these are just some of my paperbacks that I couldn't fit on the tops of my shelves. So I I do have a lot of books double stacked here so I have my paperback editions of some of Cassandra Clare's books here which I love the spines on these I just think they're so pretty so then behind those I have some random paperbacks so I just have these here I have this copy of The Mummy The Mummy is one of my all-time favorite films I am obsessed I absolutely adore it I used to watch it all the time when I was a kid with my mum and ever since i've just been obsessed with it i haven't actually read the book but i would really like to i got this on ebay um because you can hardly get these anywhere okay there's a bookmark just fell out <laughs> but yeah i bought this on ebay just because i love the movie and eventually i do want to read the book but back here as you can see is a mess i have loads of random paperbacks here really cool tolkien books here i have an atlas of tolkien and a dictionary of tolkien and i love these there are a lot of other ones you can get as well to go with these but i just haven't collected them all yet but i do plan to eventually i have this really cool paperback edition of the hunger games this is the us cover which is why i love it so much and then back there is just kind of like random ones so i have some victoria avon yard back there i have the illuminate files back there which i don't like just all different like paperbacks that i just don't really read 
and then I have some like Christmassy ones here as well so this is kind of just like paperbacks that I might already have copies of in hardcover that I haven't got rid of yet or just like random ones that I want in hardcover but can't get in hardcover but won't ever read again <laughs> I, I don't know it's weird but you can see it's a mess and there is a lot there like I said one day when I have more bookshelves I will have all these actually properly out on my shelf and I will go through it then in a future bookshelf tour but that isn't going to be for a while like I don't know when I'll have room to do this I don't have any room for any more bookshelves in my room so for now this is the mess we deal with we do not see this <laughs> the desk usually covers it so it's all good also i'm not missing a book i've just lent the second book to my mum because my mum was reading the series if you thought the top was messy this is a whole new level of messy down here is a really really random selection of paperbacks so i have my amelia fang books here as you can see i absolutely love amelia fang they're just such fun children's books and yeah i love them and then here i have loads of arcs the back here is like loads of random books so just random paperbacks and stuff and then i also have all my poetry down here as well i have andrew sapowski books here I've zoomed in and the lighting is really really bad but back here is all my greek mythology stuff so i have like my greek poets and things like that back there and then I have some like Donna Tart and some classic stuff on the top and just like random books basically so yeah weird now this is a mess <laughs> this is why I hide it <laughs> this shelf is my graphic novel shelf it is very very full and will soon need to be extended but I have a lot of graphic novels on here and some other bits I'm just going to talk through a few so I have these Korean books here so if you've ever seen the k-drama it's okay not to be okay in there they have some books and these are all korean fairy tales um and they're just stunning and i just i absolutely adored them so i have these here um and i'll just quickly show you guys them but i love these they're stunning if you've seen the show you will understand why i got these on ebay i don't really know where you can get them because they are only sold in korea um but you should be able to find them on ebay but i just absolutely love these Obviously, they are written in Korean. Um, maybe one day I will learn Korean and be able to read Korean, but at the moment I can't. But I just, I absolutely love the illustrations that are inside those books. They're absolutely stunning. Then I also have The Art of Spirited Away. So I plan to get all of these books for Studio Ghibli's movies, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. I have my Studio Ghibli coloring book. And then I have this Nightmare Before Christmas edition which um a publisher recently sent me and i'm very very excited for and i love this you guys will all know i'm a massive fan of tim burton especially nightmare before christmas i love it just a really really nice book of the movie basically yeah i just absolutely love this cover it's so stunning i do also own the children's picture book of nightmare before christmas but it is displayed somewhere else in my bedroom and i also have this emily carroll graphic novel call through the woods which i absolutely love the artwork in this is just stunning it's so pretty love the art in here like i love this style um and i just love this graphic novel it's so fun then i have my alice oseman so i have the first three volumes in the heartstopper series and then i have the two novellas nick and charlie and this winter but yeah both of these are signed as well and i just absolutely adore this series it is one of my all-time favorite series I can't wait for volume four like it's just so so cute and i love it so much I have some dc ink so these are all like the ya graphic novels that dc have come out with and then i have fence volumes one to three i recently read volume one and i'm obsessed with it i absolutely loved it so i'm very very excited to get to the other two also i have a lot of single issue comics i don't have them here i actually have those stored somewhere else but i have a lot of those um, but I did keep these two out so these are Sleeping Beauties so these are based off Stephen King's novel and yeah I just bought those from the comic book shop because I thought the art was really cool in them but I haven't read them yet I have Monstrous which I love I'm going to reread it soon because I read this a few years ago when it first came out and I don't remember a lot of it um, but I love the art style it's very like steampunk and then I have another one of my favourite graphic novel series ever which is Snot Girl I love this series so much this series is just so unbelievably weird and random and i did not expect it to go the way it did and i just love it i literally like if you're looking for a really quirky graphic novel series definitely snot girl it is just so good absolutely adore it also have this really cool pride and prejudice 
um, in a comic format and this is by Marvel and I really really love this. I think this is out of print now but you should be able to pick it up on like Amazon or eBay or somewhere. And then we have all of my Marvel and then some DC on the bottom. I have a lot of Marvel comics here so these are all the trade paperbacks that I have. Um, at one point I did create a 616 master list which is basically all the comic books for the timeline of the movies. So the movies are all centered around the 616 universe within Marvel Comics because Marvel have multiple universes with different types of each character so like you have Spider-Man then you also have Amazing Spider-Man they kind of exist in two different universes so this is mostly 616 stuff um, I haven't actually read all of these some of them I still need to read because some of them I picked up at a comic con and haven't gotten to yet this one here is my favorite Marvel comic ever so this is House of M um, and this is with the X-Men and this kind of follows Scarlet Witch this isn't necessarily part of the 616 I don't think uh, maybe it will be in the future who knows um but i just love this this is such a good graphic novel if you're looking for a good marvel comic and you're not sure which one to go for i definitely recommend house of m house of m is literally just such a good comic this kind of takes a good focus on scarlet witch and her ability to warp reality and i won't say any more than that but i absolutely love this this is literally my favorite marvel comic it is just so good i also have some star wars in there as well and then spider-man avengers um guardians of the galaxy captain marvel and then i have some dc down here so i have a couple of harley quinn i have some batman i have some countdown final crisis which is which includes the justice league i have watchmen and then i have wonder woman Earth one so i love this this is so good i really need to pick up volume two i think volume three comes out soon if you like wonder woman then i definitely recommend this because it's just really really fun and yeah i really really like this and then i also have harleen so i still haven't read this i've been meaning to read this for so long um, but this is a really really cool jacket i really like this it's just really cool i can't wait to read this this is basically harley quinn's origin story so i'm really really excited to get to this i do plan to read it soon it's kind of like most of my graphic novels i have a lot more that i want to get but for now this is my stack like i said i have a lot of single issues of comics as well but i've stored those away somewhere where i don't remember <laughs> Um, but I just remember there's a lot of them. So this is a very random shelf. This is kind of mostly adult fantasy, but obviously you can see the Olympus books here. This is the Heroes of Olympus series. I haven't read yet, but I bought them ages ago and they just kind of have no place. So they're down here. I have some Tolkien. So I do have other editions of these, but they are on the very, very top of my bookcase. I have this really, really nice edition of The Hobbit, which is cloth bound and I really like it. I have Brandon Sanderson's Rhythm of War and this is book four. This is signed as well. I don't own book one, two or three. I haven't read them. I don't even remember ordering this, but apparently I did. Yeah, this is signed by Brandon Sanderson. So I have that. I will eventually read that series. I do own all of the Game of Thrones books, but they're in paperback and they are stacked up on the very top of my bookcase. But I have this really, really nice edition. I would like to collect all of them in this edition, even though truth be told i probably won't ever read them <laughs> i also have edge dancer by brandon sanderson and then up here i have a random fairy loot <laughs> cushion i also have the u.s paperback editions of never night in god's grave although i haven't got the third one yet and i haven't read these so here we have this jamie fraser candle from the outlander series and then i have valentine fantasy editions from the 70s or the 80s i believe um so i have the hobbit the two towers and the return of the king still trying to track down a fellowship of the ring but i just really like these editions and i just thought they were really cool to have then i have these pelican shakespeare books so i think these are from the 70s i want to say i'm pretty sure these are from the 70s um but i really like these so we've got Macbeth, we've got the tempest we've got a midsummer night's dream Anthony and Cleopatra, Romeo and Juliet, Othello, and Julius Caesar. So I still need to collect loads more of them, but I just really like these vintage editions. So yeah. <laughs> then I have another set of a Discovery of Witches. So these are just the UK paperbacks. And I have books one to three in the Outlander series. So I'm currently up to the third book. I did start the audio early in the year, but I haven't gone back to it yet. I do plan to finish the whole series. I just haven't yet. Um, 
But yeah, I have those. So this is another messy shelf that's usually hidden away by, as you can see, I kind of dump all my like pens that I don't really use that much down here. I have like a lot of bookmarks in this little like tin thing here. Um, so I have this Oxford Blackwells one and then I just have like loads of, it came in like book subscription boxes and things and like just really random old bookmarks that I don't really use. So this is kind of my random shelf. Um, so I have most of my, any hardback thrillers that I own are down here and then contemporaries kind of. I love this copy of this book here. I think this is so pretty. I remember finding this book in the bookstore a few years ago and being obsessed and being like, I don't care how much this is. I need to buy this book. And obviously I did and I just think it's a really gorgeous edition and of course it is illustrated by Chris Riddell which is the main reason that I got it so yeah this is probably my favorite book on this entire shelf and in the corner I have some Jack the Ripper books I had this really weird like fascination with Jack the Ripper a few years ago where I was really interested in reading about Jack the Ripper I just find it fascinating that nobody ever really caught the killer I haven't actually read those though but yeah, I have those there and then these are just like really random. This hardcover copy of My Sister the Serial Killer. I absolutely love this book. This is such a good book and yeah, I really, really enjoyed this when I read it. So I would recommend this to people if you're looking for a really good thriller. And then I keep this Star Wars tin down here. So this is just kind of full with random stuff from subscription boxes that I don't really use. Cards and things and earrings and all different sorts so yeah i just keep all that stuff in there so yeah this shelf is just like really random and i do own a lot more thrillers and a lot more contemporary romance books but all of those are on the very top of my shelf um so obviously they're not displayed with all these which really bugs me but i just don't have room to display them so these are just the ones that I have on my main shelves at the moment. In So Also by Paula Hawkins is one of my favourite thrillers. It is such a good thriller and I couldn't put it down when I read it. And then I have this book here which is Dangerous Alliance and this is like a Jane Austen inspired romance book and I just really really want to read this. I just haven't gotten to it yet. I need to be in the, in the mood to read romance. Okay, so this is as best as I can do with my top shelves because my tripod's not actually tall enough to reach. Um, but this is kind of all of my non-fiction section. So I have a lot of different things in here. So I have kind of all my alchemy and witchy books here. So I have this really, really nice edition here, which I just love. I have this one here, which is all about the occult and witchcraft and magic. So this has a lot of like illustrations in, like history to do with witchcraft throughout different countries and in art and all different things and i just really really love that book um i also have this one here which is by uh, which is the oxford illustrated history of witchcraft and magic and yeah i really really love that i also have this mythology book here which is by dk and has a basic summary for a lot of different myths which i love then this is all my kind of like greek mythology and greek retelling stuff so i have pandora's jar by natalie haynes so this is actually signed and i just adore the cover i think it's so pretty so yeah it's signed these fairy lights are very annoying but let's just fix those then i have the song of achilles so this is one of my favorite books this is an absolutely amazing book it broke my heart and i absolutely loved it i really want to get this in the hardcover but I haven't been able to track a hardcover down, but I do love this paperback. However, funny story about the hardcover. When I thought I'd ordered a hardcover on eBay, I actually got sent an ARC. Um, so I do have the proof copy for Song of Achilles from 2011, which is obviously an amazing thing to have in my collection because this is very, very rare, but I'm still bummed that I didn't get the hardcover, so yeah. And then I have this edition of Cersei, which is just stunning. I love it. I have some Stephen Fry. And I have a signed edition of Troy by Stephen Fry as well. And this is kind of just my like Greek mythology and witchy kind of books because I love anything to do with like alchemy and witchcraft. I just think it's really interesting. So this is kind of like my non-fiction-y shelf and then it kind of continues over into the next shelf which I will show you guys. So I know this isn't ideal but like I said I don't have anywhere to balance this tripod except for where it is now. But this starts my Barnes & Noble collection as well. So up here I have this Folio Society Greek Mythology set that I picked up in a charity shop. I have these Barnes & Noble editions so I have the Iliad and the Odyssey. I have this really nice Chinese myths and folk tales. I have this gorgeous Angela Carter's book of fairy tales, which is absolutely stunning. I love that. I have Grimm's fairy tales by Wanda Noble, and I just adore these editions. I have two of these. 
so I have that one and I also have this one here and they have the foiled edges have Little Women the Bronte Sisters Jane Austen seven novels Sherlock Holmes and then I also have the Star Wars trilogy one which I really really love as well I really want the one with Darth Vader on the front um, but I love this one I'm really really glad I managed to get this I got this in the US so I don't know if you can still get this or not in the UK but yeah this is kind of like my Bonds and Noble collector's edition shelf and I just love it. All of my top shelves are mostly like classics, non-fiction kind of stuff. So this is mostly just classics on here. So I have a few Bonds and Noble editions. So I have the Alice in Wonderland, I have Dracula, and I also have Frankenstein and Dracula and other editions from Bonds and Noble. But I have this really stunning edition of Alice in Wonderland. I absolutely adore this, it is so nice. And I think this is one of my favourite books that I own. This is absolutely stunning. I love this artist so much. And this has become one of my favourite illustrators. Um, but this is just a nice little illustrated edition of Alice in Wonderland. And yeah, I love it so much. I also have this really nice edition of Frankenstein. I picked this up in the Strand when I went to New York. And yeah, I really, really adore this edition. I just love it so much. I also have these two editions from Barnes & Noble of Frankenstein and Dracula, which are some of my favourite editions of the books I own. I own a lot of copies of both books. I have this really nice edition of the Iliad as well, which I just love. This is from um, the Everyman's Library. I have this really stunning edition of the Great Gatsby as well. Um, so this is just really, really pretty. I have these three Penguin Classics Deluxe Editions. So I have Dracula, Wuthering Heights and Little Women. And I just love this art style. I just think it's so nice. Wuthering Heights is definitely my favorite of the three. Then I have these two editions of Wuthering Heights and Pride and Prejudice. I really, really like these. Um, I was originally planning to get all of the ones in this series of this new like design, but I don't think I'm going to anymore. Just because I'm not a big classics fan, so it would be a bit stupid for me to spend all my money getting them. But they are really, really nice. I also have this copy of The House Without Windows. This is a really, really good book. It's actually a children's book. It was written by a 12-year-old. And if you read this book, you would never believe it was written by a 12-year-old. It's absolutely incredible and it's just such a nice story. So this is the last shelf on my bookcases. It's very dusty, which is really, really gross. I really need to dust it. But this is my kind of like antique books are up here so obviously here i have this horror book and then i have the haunting of hill house by shelly jackson i just love this cover it's so nice but these are like my really really vintage old antique books i just love these but the best ones are these ones so i have this cup and saucer um which i really really like and it sits up there with my other alice in wonderland book so I'm sorry if you can hear any noise in the background. Everyone in my house decides they want to do stuff when I decide to film. Um, and I'm filming this after I film the rest of the video. But basically, let's just continue. So I have these two books here. So I have this Grimm's Fairy Tales book here. So I have no idea how old this actually is, but it is old, like really, really old. It has this really, really nice cover and the spine is just amazing. And inside is just like this so there is a note written in here from 1941 so i know it is as old as the 1940s but i have no idea how much older it could be i did try to find this online um, and i found it on one website and that listed it for 500 dollars as an antique book so i'm guessing it's a pretty old and rare edition I absolutely adore this copy it's just absolutely stunning and like i said i really do need to get it valued and try and figure out what date it was made but um yeah at the moment i don't actually know but i just think this is a stunning book and i absolutely love antique books i'd love to collect them and hopefully i can this is definitely one of my most favorite books that i own and i just think it's really really nice and yeah i love it <laughs> so i do also have these two here as well which are both grooms fairy tales as well i don't know the dates for these two um sorry if the camera keeps going in not focus but i have this one here so i have no idea what the date of this one is either this one's definitely not as old as the other one it just looks like this inside if it'll focus um it's got color in it so it's definitely not as old as the other one it's still a very very old edition and then i also have this hans anderson fairy tales edition here which is another really old one again not as old as the other but yeah i have these two really old copies as well i just really like collecting these <laughs> So my last favourite antique book that I have is this Alice in Wonderland copy. So this is another one that I found on Facebook and I also believe it's very, very rare. I cannot find this anywhere. 
so yeah i have no idea how old this is but this is actually starting to come away so i definitely need to get it repaired um but this is what it looks like and i just love this it's just really really nice to have i have no idea for all i know this could be a first edition it could be a second edition it could be i don't know um it is definitely very very old and is falling apart i don't know if you guys can see but there's a little note here for someone and it says 1910 so i mean it's at least 100 years old which is just amazing like to own a book this old so yeah this is a 100 year old plus copy of alice in wonderland it could definitely be a lot older but who knows the camera doesn't want to focus anymore but yeah i really really love that it's like one of my most prized possessions i own i just have those antique books there which again i absolutely love and i definitely want to keep collecting them i also have this cool vintage copy of the lord of the rings by tolkien in this really nice like leather bound copy i found this in an antique store and i love it i think this is also quite rare to find now and then i have this really really gorgeous edition of mary shirley's frankenstein which i just yeah i absolutely adore those editions i also have this cool copy of oliver twist by charles dickens which i found in a charity shop i have no idea how old this is it's pretty old but not as old as those other books i just really like the cover i just thought it looked really really cool um so i have that one and then i have this copy of the boy the mole the fox and the horse by charlie maxey so my friend Meg from Pride and Fiction got me this for my birthday earlier this year. I just absolutely adore this book. It's such a beautiful book and it has a really, really nice message. And I love the illustrations and I just think this is a book that everyone should own and read. It's just absolutely beautiful. I love it. I just have this little red telephone box that I just put loads of coppers in. Um, I just really like that. I just think it looks really cute on that shelf. That is pretty much like all of my like antique kind of books. I do plan to get more. I do really like collecting them. This is a really dusty shelf. So I did say that I might try to show you guys the very tops of my shelves. I'm not going to try and show all the books that are up there because there are stacks of books behind this front row here. Um, but I'll just quickly give you guys an overview just so you can see so pretty much all of the paperbacks that I own that aren't on my shelves are up here and in storage So there is stacks upon stacks behind these books um, There's a whole range of books up here. So I just have some YA here um, I have some contemporaries in the middle um, And then I have my Sarah J Maas Throne of Glass books there. I have loads more books behind and then there's a few hardbacks here of just some like old YA, my Akatar paperbacks, the Shatter Me series, some John Green. I have loads of thrillers there and loads more behind. So the books there that I have that are back to front are actually just some contemporaries. They're really, really bright and colourful and I don't really like bright colours, which is why I put them that way around because I just really didn't like how the spines looked. They're just a bunch of like contemporary romance books really and I just shoved them there because yeah. I didn't want them on my shelves but like I said I do have a lot of paperbacks behind these books that I guess when I do have some more bookshelves in the future I will definitely have on display and then do a proper in-depth book collection video and then I do have these books down here um so I have my US Harry Potter books but I just don't want them on display anymore personally I just don't really want to display my Harry Potter books anymore which is why they are all inside the like Harry Potter box there US hardbacks are in there and then I just have some like festive Christmas books down the corner and um, my wand and then behind there is even more books. Lots of books and really really messy and yeah I just wish I could show you guys all of the books that I actually do own but I just can't. There's just not enough room. That is kind of like all of the paperbacks on the top. Maybe one day I will do a separate video showing you guys all of them because there's probably like over 100 books up there. That's kind of the general gist of all of those up there. So as you can see, I'm clearly in a different outfit and this is clearly filmed at different times the rest of the video, but I have just finally finished filming the end of it because I couldn't film it all in one go. But I really hope you guys enjoyed my bookshelf tour. I have received so many requests for this video ever since I started booktube and I've just always put off doing it because I knew it would take a lot of work and a lot of time to do. But yes, we are finally, finally here with the bookshelf tour and I really do hope that it was worth the wait for you guys because yeah, if it wasn't then <laughs> that's gonna suck. But yeah, I have a lot of books as you will have seen 
and I do plan to do some more in-depth videos so I've had a few requests for like a signed editions video which I will be doing soon and then I want to do like a Sarah J Maas book collection video and things like that to go in more depth about the books that I do own but yes I really do hope that you enjoyed my bookshelf tour and that you finally got a good glimpse at my collection because I am very very proud of my book collection I really do love to collect books as well as read them as you all will know and yeah I just really hope that you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy it then please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to and I'll see you in the next one bye